Welcome back to the URM Academy YouTube channel where we help you kick ass at mixing. I'm Joey Sturgis and guys, I have to say it, I hate almost all snares, which is part of what I'm bringing you in today's video. <laughs> if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, smash the bell button and get notified whenever we put up another great video for you guys. All right, in this clip, I'm gonna walk you through my snare layering method that boosts the snare sound with a sample, but in a super organic way, while also avoiding that total robot mode. This is just one segment of an entire eight hour live mixing session available on Nail The Mix. Now for all you guys out there that absolutely hate drum editing and drum samples, just remember, this is only one technique that achieves a certain type of sound and knowing many techniques allows you to become a better mixer in all types of scenarios. You're never gonna know when it might come in handy. Now there's a lot to cover here, so let's jump into the video. I'm really weird about snare drums. Like for whatever reason, I hate all snares. And so there's like, a few snares in the world that I like. <laughs> so uh, I like to have a lot of control over it and I like to decide, you know, where are the hardest hits, where are the middle hits, where are the soft hits. And I'm gonna make my decisions based on what the drummer did, but I'm gonna still guide the computer like to do it the way that I wanna do it. So um, I made five tracks here but they're supposed to be mono, so let me do that again. Mono, five tracks. And that's gonna be like hardest, next hardest, medium, soft, softer, right? So snare crack, snare hard, snare medium, snare soft, snare softer. And then it's just a process of going through the whole song and choosing which snare hit is what kind of hit. And this is sort of my way of like preventing it from going total robot mode, but also being able to stylistically decide, you know, where those things happen because I kind of want to control it. I mean, if you're really trying to get like a similar sound to how like how I mix in my productions, like I'm, this is what I'm doing. The original reason why I did this, I really can't even remember. I think I was just frustrated with you know, with drum samplers and, have, you know, if you if you use Drumagog in the way that it was designed, which is like just put one Drumagog instance on your snare mic track and here we go, it like doesn't make the right decisions. Like it'll get to a snare hit and it'll choose a really soft one and you're like, well, no, I want a hard one there. So over time, I just evolved it to this process. I like to decide exactly what hit is hard and which hit isn't. Um, now I'm on the snare roll and let me kind of show you what I'm doing here because I did some stuff while he was talking. So I basically went through and started cutting out each hit where I knew there was going to be a different setting, right? I could have just cut each one and then dragged each one individually, but I kind of knew like, okay, these four are going to go together. So just keep that in, in the same group, right? Now, after I've gone through and made each one a little audio slice, some of these are not going to trigger Drumagog because look how quiet that hit is. It, it doesn't look like it's, you know, it's not as loud as the other hits, but we want it to, uh, we still want it to trigger Drumagog. So the cool thing about separating each one into an audio slice is you can select them all and you can go to process and normalize and it'll make them all really loud and so now all of these will definitely trigger Drumagog and then to prevent it from double triggering we can just fade it out like that right so we need to start listening to and I think I just saw a mistake that I made there we go. Uh, we need to start listening to some of these decisions we're making, so I'm gonna go ahead and load up uh, Drumagog on here. So someone's asking, I kinda answered it in my own opinion in the chat, but someone's asking or saying, 
he doesn't really get how this method is better than editing a MIDI track because the level of control over the velocity has way more resolution than splitting a snare track into Use MIDI four then. velocities. Yeah, exactly. Use MIDI. I also think that this is more of an 80-20 thing too because for this kind of music, like how many layers do you really need? Like how crazy are you going to go? You don't have to understand how I do things. I just do them. <laughs> I don't know, man. Preference. This is this is my preference. I don't know why. I'm just super fast at it. I've been doing it forever. I feel like I have all the control in the world that I want to have over the song, and so that's all that matters to me. Let's hear this. Make sure I uh, set those right. Oh, dynamic tracking. I don't want that. Yeah, I mean, this gets a little annoying to deal with at first, but once it's once it's set right, it's kind of set and forget. So um, this snare sample I'm using doesn't even have like a fifth layer. I think there's only four. Let me look. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So we're just going to remove this bottom layer. What snare sample is that? This one is snare four. Uh, Steven Slate 3.5. All right, cool. So you can start to hear how this is playing to my advantage now. Um, Here's what the drummer played. And then here's how I re-sampled it. Right? It sounds the same. And that's because I'm just kind of copying, I'm looking at what he did on the, on the track visually, and I'm just kind of copying what he did. Now, when you get into these like ridiculous snare rolls, like this, you kind of have to do some tricky stuff to make it sound realistic. So if we listen to this. So there's kind of a build up there. Um, we only have four layers to work with. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna kind of eyeball it at first. Let me bring this uh, snare hit in. So these are the accents. Now I need to normalize all of my neck, my accents. So Double check, make sure. All right, cool. So um, we're only keeping the accents because we're about to just, to make this a lot easier, we're gonna just take one of these hits and I'm just gonna cut it like right to the grid. And if you're doing like a bunch of sample layering, I don't suggest doing it this way. You're gonna wanna have to use the original hits and make sure they're all phase aligned and stuff. But since I'm like just completely replacing the snare sound, I'm gonna keep it right on the grid. Like I don't really care that much. And I'm just copying pasting all the in-between hits cause it's a 16th note snare roll all the way through. And then when I play it back, it's going to sound a little goofy because it's not done yet, but. Right. So one thing we need to do is make those softer hits a little softer. And I'm going to do that by going to this track and just turning it down a little bit. Come on. Uh, 
And I'm just kind of setting the volume of that like relative to what, I, what I'm hearing. Cool, so that sounds good. Um, now when it starts to get a little more intense, I might think about raising these up a level or something. So let's, let's just... So there's kind of like a little hiccup before the snare hit. Maybe not that drastic, but it's in there sometimes like this. Then this is louder here and here. Try this. That sounds right. Come on, hard drive. There we go. Yeah, I might try this whole section louder. No, I like it the other way. And then this might be where you go in and like automate these softer hits to be a little louder because it's getting more intense there. So let's hear the whole thing. Okay, so that happens a little too suddenly. So I'm going to take this point and move it back to here. Now I've got a gradual rise of those softer hits. Let's try that. Cool. And then these crack hits here, we can also make them build up a little bit too by putting a little bit of automation right here. Let's try that out. Sweet. That sounds like the original. And that's how you would do that snare roll.